Welcome to our review on forces in collisions. So when we're talking about collisions, we're talking about having potentially a large negative acceleration. So one of the most common scenarios we'll be asked about here is in the case of a car crash. So hopefully every time you get into a car, you put on your seatbelt. It is obviously law these days, but some people still choose not to. The whole idea of your seatbelt is to actually allow you to come to a slower stop so that when you're wearing the seatbelt and the car comes to a sudden stop, you continue to move forwards for a little while and the seatbelt's going to stretch to bring you to a slower stop. Now that's important in terms of the forces that are exerted on your body. Once you've had a crash, then the seatbelts do need replacing because they've been stretched and they don't go back to normal after that. So they won't be effective a second time. If, however, you've chosen not to wear a seatbelt and the car comes to a sudden stop, you're going to continue to move forwards at the original speed of the car. And generally speaking, that ends in a very messy way. So put your seatbelts on. Even though seatbelts are designed to be a safety feature to protect us from injury, there are, of course, some injuries that happen even when you're wearing a seatbelt. So if the negative acceleration is very large, you can suffer from what's called a compression injury or your internal organs could become damaged as they collide with the ribs as they come to a stop against them. You could be asked to carry out a calculation based around the forces. An example is here. The mass of a person in a car is 70 kilograms. Calculate the force that they experience if the acceleration is minus 6.6 .6 meters per second squared. First thing we're going to do is highlight, jot down, underline or circle the important bits of information there. Then we need to think about what formula we've got to recall. We've got a mass, we've got an acceleration and we need to work out force. So it's force is mass times acceleration. Substitute in 70 times minus 6.6, .6, put that into your calculator, and then you end up with the force of minus 462 newtons. Now, something you could have heard about, particularly around theme park rides, is something called G-forces. So you might have been told that you've experienced the turn, which is the equivalent of two Gs or three Gs. So that is literally looking at the acceleration due to gravity and comparing what you're experiencing to that. So if the acceleration that you experience is about twice the acceleration due to gravity, which hopefully you remember is 9.81 meters per second squared, then you feel a force that's equal to twice your weight, and that's 2g. If obviously it was three times, then it'd be 3g and so forth. Another example of a calculation they could ask you to do is given here. A car travelling at 31 metres per second collides with a motorway barrier and comes to a halt in two seconds. Calculate the acceleration and the force on a child of mass 50 kilograms. So the first thing that we do, because it's a calculation question, is highlight, circle, underline or jot down the important bits of information. The next thing, this is a two stage calculation because we're being asked to calculate acceleration and force. So we need to recall the acceleration formula, which is acceleration is the change in speed divided by time. In this example, we're going from 31 meters per second to a stop, so zero. So our change in speed is minus 31, and we divide that by the time of two seconds which gives us an acceleration of minus 15.5 meters per second squared. And remember, the minus sign is important. We can then use that to calculate the force by using forces mass times acceleration. So we substitute in our mass of 50, the acceleration of minus 15.5, put that into our calculator, and the overall force is minus 775 newtons. So what we find is when cars travel quickly, the forces involved can be quite large. So we in the UK have a maximum speed of 70 miles an hour on our motorways, even though quite a few people seem to ignore that and think it's more of a guideline rather than a rule. The downside to that is the faster you go, the greater the force you experience in the case of a crash will be, and therefore the more injuries you will sustain. So what we find is that the actual force that you will experience from a collision 
is dependent on the amount of time it takes for that collision to come to a stop. So what we can do in the design of cars to try to counteract these forces is to increase the time it takes for that car to come to a complete stop. So we've built in things like a crumple zone, which is where we've actually built in materials of different densities on the car itself, so that some are designed to basically squish up in an accident. So that means the car is going to take longer to come to a stop, reducing the forces acting on the people. We also have airbags, which have the same idea. They inflate so that rather than your head hitting the steering wheel, the dashboard or other hard surfaces, and therefore coming to a rather rapid and messy stop, you can hit something that will allow you to deflate it slightly and therefore come to a slower stop, thereby reducing the forces acting on you. Hopefully at the end of this video you can explain the dangers caused by large decelerations and talk about ways that the car manufacturers have actually tried to reduce these forces.